Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this very timely webinar. Uh, it really is a global crowd we have today. Uh, we had 22 countries sign up to join us today. And so this is not something that's just affecting one side of the world, just like this global pandemic we've been in has not just affected one country or one parish, but it really is a global effort for the church to renew, uh, to come together in this season. And so really that's kind of the scene we wanna to set today. And we to do that, we have our, our, our global audience, both of the parishes and our regional coordinators. So if you'd help me uh, welcome our, our, our two other regional coordinators joining me on the call today. My name is Matt Regitz and I'm here in the United States. And we have Ms. Hannah Von Spruce from the UK. Hi, Matt, it's great to be here. Hey, great to be with you, Hannah. And also from uh, Canada, just north of the United States or northern U.S., uh, we have uh, Mr. Eric Myatt with us. Hey, Eric. Hey, Matt. Hey, Hannah. Great to be with you, everybody. So good to get to spend this hour together. There is so much to talk about, uh, about putting people in the right seats on the bus. And we use that bus analogy a little bit. But also to do that, we need to know what these qualities are about how we put people in the right seats. And I know Eric's gonna get into that in a little bit, but that's uh, what you're here for. If you joined us on accident, hang around, stay with us. And, and hopefully we can tell you a little bit more about that, but also about our mission here at Divine Renovation. Our mission is to inspire, connect and equip parishes to become missional. And not just in this season, but in the seasons of life that we're gonna find ourselves beyond where we currently are. So it is helping parishes navigate each season to inspire, connect, and equip their own people for mission. And if this is new to you, we'd love to, to talk to you more about that. And we've grown this entire movement, this entire network around parishes and communities and dioceses that have three things in common. Uh, we have a focus on mission. We desire the best of leadership principles and through a complete reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit. So if this sounds like something you'd like to be part of, you're in the right place. And we're glad that you're here. And I'm going to just kick us off today. I'm going to turn it over to Hannah to pray us into our conversation today. So Hannah. Thanks so much. Yeah, let's pray together. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you so much for this gift that you have drawn together so many parishes from around the world. We just think of every single parish that's represented here. And we know that you want to create within each one of them a beacon of light where your glory, your power can be seen. And we pray for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit on each one of us today, wherever we are. As we are together over this next hour, we ask that you would really inspire in us next steps and anoint us with the Holy Spirit so that we would see clearly perhaps have a clearer vision of the leaders that we need to invite into leadership um, or have a clearer understanding of what we need to do going forward. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Anna. And uh, thanks everybody again for joining us for today's session. It's going to be a great conversation. Uh, today's topic, as Matt mentioned, the right people in the right seats, five essential qualities of a great parish leader. And we're so pleased with the response for all of you uh, coming and, and registering for this event. It's really exciting. Uh, it's kind of two topics, as Matt uh, mentioned. First, what leadership qualities make for a great leader? Qualities that I want to foster in, in myself and qualities that I'm looking for in others that I want to invite into leadership. And then second, the right people in the right seats. As we become aware of the right qualities to look for in current or potential leaders, the next question is, where can I or where can they best serve? Which seat on the bus is best? Uh, am I serving in the right spots? And, and maybe more difficult in some ways is the person that I'm looking at selecting the right person for this role or for this leadership um, role that I, I'm looking to get support in. So it's gonna be a great discussion. And we, we wanted to hear a little bit first about how you found yourself on this call today. So I think we have a poll here that we can uh, 
pop up here. I think there it is. Um, what prompted you to join us uh, today? Maybe you're in a leadership role. Maybe you're a priest seeking to raise up more leaders. Uh, maybe you've been invited into parish leadership and are trying to cultivate some of these qualities in, in yourself. Uh, maybe you lead in a different area outside the parish. Maybe you're just curious about what this is all about and what this event is. So uh, wherever you're coming from, for whatever reason you connected with us today, you're most welcome. And we're grateful for you to uh, be with us. And so while you're answering that, uh, thank you for responding to the poll. I'd love to introduce our panel for today's discussion. Allegra Mutanda is the Director of Evangelization and Leadership at St. Peter and Winchester Martyrs in Winchester over in England. We also have Ben Smith. He's a senior leadership team member at St. Charles Paisley in Scotland. And Kurt Clement as well, Director of Adult Formation at St. Anne's Parish in uh, Texas, uh, along there with, with Matt. Kurt is also a coach with Divine Renovation. So uh, thank you all so much for uh, joining us, the three of you, for being with us on today's call. Thank you. Thank Great you. Great so this session uh, is all about leadership, as I mentioned, both selecting leaders and also cultivating these qualities in ourselves. So I thought we'd start today by hearing a little bit from each of you on the panel. Um, Briefly, tell us about your, your journey. Tell us how you came to lead in your, your current capacity. So Allegra, um, if you don't mind, let's start with you. No problem, thank you, Ari. It's, my journey into leadership is a really funny one because I had been leading in a um, smaller capacity. And then the first time I was uh, asked to lead in a bigger role, I said, um, thank you, but no. So the parish priest came and uh, the priest I was working for came and you know started talking to me about it. And I spent most of the meeting crying because I said, no, I don't want this. I don't want to do that. And explaining to me, really, I think they had recognized a gift in me, which I hadn't. And um, you know, I was looking at it as quite a responsibility. And so slowly I started growing in leadership skills. Now, in terms of um, leading in my current capacity, I am employed. So um, I had an in to interview alongside other people. And uh, Father Mark, my parish priest, said that himself and the senior leadership team, what they were looking for was someone who could share the vision and had a passion uh, for it. That was really important. But also they were looking for three qualities, hungry, to have that passion for, for the role, someone who was humble and willing to learn, but would, who would put others first and promote teams over themselves and someone who was good with people, but also he wanted somebody who was a great at evangelization or had the passion for evangelization and who could drive us forward in that. And so I got the what role. I love that Allegra. I love what you said, uh, recognize a gift that I didn't in, in yourself, that they, in calling you to leadership, recognize that gift. And that's just a frame really quick. What we can keep in mind, all of us on the call here, while we're thinking about others, we perhaps could call to leadership. Um, these can help frame our I see in you conversations. When we're selecting people for leadership, we can, you can say, I see in you this quality or this quality. It's really, as Allegra, you shared great there. Uh, it's really empowering, recognizing a gift that perhaps they don't see in themselves. Ben, how about yourself? What's been your leadership journey? Hi Eric, uh, thanks very much for having me. Um, so as Eric said, my name's Ben and I suppose my journey to uh, the position I'm in today starts in school um, where there was a pilgrimage to Poland uh, that, and then after that, there was two pilgrimage, pilgrimages to Poland and the second one was World Youth Day uh, in Krakow which in 2016, uh, which was amazing. And we came back so enthused and energised and excited and we came back home and realised there wasn't that much for people our age and, and the diocese at the time. So a couple of us went to uh, the bishop and the, the youth, youth director to see if we could organise something. So that was uh, how I first got involved. And then over the years, I was thinking about it. You just kind of, it's almost like leadership by stealth. <laughs> you pick up responsibilities along the way until you find yourself uh, having more and more responsibilities. Uh, and as of 2019, we started our, our journey with uh, Divine Renovation and with uh, Matt and our, our parish priest, uh, Father Jim. Uh, so that's what's led me here today. 
That's awesome, Ben. Thanks. Thanks for that. Kurt, how about yourself? What's been your leadership journey? Yeah, I love hearing all these stories of young leaders, you know, of Allegra and Ben. I'm a little bit of a, an older leader. Yeah, I've worked in the church for 25 years, and there are a couple moments of my leadership journey that stand out. Um, the first was when I was like 26 years old, and uh, I had experienced really profound conversion to Christ, to the church, and uh, I was like, oh, I, th I think I maybe need to go volunteer at the local parish. So I went offering to like work with the youth confirmation or something. And the lady said, you know what? You seem like just the kind of person we're looking to hire. And I was offered a job pretty much on the spot. I I'd love to go back and see from her, like, what did you see in me? You know, because Allegra, you're, the, the, what you said was really important. I think those characteristics of humble, hungry and people, good to people. Maybe there's some of that that she saw. I don't know. Um, so that was my journey of leadership in the church, you know, and youth ministry began 25 years ago. But there's another profound point of leadership in the church that I experienced actually only about five years ago, because before that time, I had natural instincts about leadership, but I also had massive blind spots. And in five years, I was trying to think of when this was, and I found this book. It's a book by John Maxwell called Developing the Leader Within You. And I had a guy in the parish who literally gave it to me. And he said, basically wrote me a hand note that says, I, I, I see in you leadership. And I hope this book blesses you. And this was my first exposure five years ago to the whole genre, if you will, of leadership. And I'm thinking, wow, I've worked in the church for more than 15 years. And I was never invested in as like leadership is a thing. And, uh, and I think sometimes we see it as like businessy, you know, leadership over here, and it doesn't really isn't really super congruent with the church. And and everything that I have learned about leadership over the last five years has helped me to serve and love people better, has helped me to empower and unleash the gifts in other people, has helped me to have the hard conversations because a lot of times in parishes we're just like nice and busy, nice and busy, but. It's helped me to have the hard conversations and and helped me to you know, understand how to be fruitful and help others to be fruitful. So anyway, so that was a big moment for me in leadership was when I really that was the first of many books. And many of behind you are leadership books and podcasts that have really helped me grow exponentially tr to try to grow as a leader. That's awesome, Kurt. Yeah, it's a whole world of of leadership and leadership development. It's one of the keys of divine renovation, the best of leadership that we, as you said so well, uh, apply to a ministry context, a parish leadership context for, for fruitfulness in the kingdom. So uh, that's really exciting. I'm so glad uh, the Lord called each of you to where you are and that you're able to share with us a little bit today. We're going to get into the, the qualities now. And Kurt, like you mentioned, this this leadership thing is a whole uh, a whole world, a whole genre of, of an area. We're just going to scratch the surface here today. With these five qualities that we have identified that make a great parish leader. So the five qualities we have we've identified for the sake of this discussion are humility, grit, catalyst, multiplier, and maturity. So humility, grit, and we'll come back to these as we get into our discussion, catalyst, multiplier, and maturity. So our panelists are going to share on some of these qualities, but these, of course, even so far in the discussion, are not exhaustive list of what makes a great leader, but, but they can serve as a bit of a, a gut check of our own leadership, as well as a guide when, when we're considering inviting others into leadership. So Divine Renovation has, has more tools as well and guides to leadership teams and selection and, and complementary gifts on a team. Um, you can find more on our, our website and through our guidebooks. But for today's discussion, we're going to get into these uh, five qualities. So the first quality, humility. Um, we'll discuss this. The, this virtue, um, you know, it doesn't just kind of protect us against, against pride, but it helps us to have a really right ordered view of ourselves, including what our gifts are and how we might use them to serve. So Allegra, maybe we could start with you. Why is humility essential? 
I think when I look at the word humility, I see really very much in that um, servant leadership and um, being leader or raising leaders. It's essential in recognizing that as leaders, we do not have all the answers. You know, my role, our roles as leader does not give us supremacy over other people, but rather it's having the humility to recognize that others may have the answer that we are looking, you know, for, looking for. And that wisdom um, experience can lay with someone else. It's about being willing to learn from others, both those with more experience and newer people. And um, for me, I saw that very much in my previous role. Um, I had to come to put together a, a core team for a project that, um, that I was leading. And actually on that core team, I had three priests on my team, you know, all three of them had very big responsibilities in their diocese or in their religious communities. Um, but also some of the lay peoples on the team there had, again, big responsibilities in the diocese um, or in the communities. But what I saw in that group of people, you know, that group of people embodied, to me, they embodied humility because there were people who were willing to lay aside their leadership roles where they were leading to come and serve on someone else's team. And it was very much about how can I serve? Where I, am I needed? And it wasn't about I am the big, you know, the big I am, but it was I'm here to serve the people and I'm here to do this. And so what it did, you know, over that year we worked together, I saw and it inspired me because it was a good culture of humility. And it was something that I thought, this is helping me grow myself because I'm looking in fantastic leaders, a quality that I'm aspiring to. But also it has meant that in my own roles, when I'm raising teams, this is something that I'm looking for, to have to be and to work with a team where servant leadership is at the forefront, where the culture is, how can I serve? How do you need me? And I see that in the parish here where I am, in my parish priest, and in the senior leadership team, again, that culture of humility, what can I do? Where can I serve when the need arises? Um, so I find that very inspiring. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. The, the readiness to serve, despite kind of like, like you mentioned, portfolio or, or past experience, like how can I be a part of serving in this context? That's awesome. Kurt, how about you? Humility, what, what uh, comes to mind when you hear about that quality? Well, what comes to my mind is my pastor, Father Henry Petter. Um, if you were to do an assessment like a strength finder, um, I think his top eight gifts are all relational gifts. He doesn't have a strategic bone in his body. He's not a high on the influencing, very much on the relational. So in some ways you would say he doesn't, what people have in their mind as far as a great leader, um, he doesn't have a lot of the, what, the, the common things that people think about. But he is one of the best leaders I've ever been a part of because of his humility. I mean, he's 75 in two weeks. And uh, six years ago, he began a journey with divine renovation where he totally he was in a big thriving parish and could have coasted the last five years. But instead, he really was open to learning a new way. And he started to lead out of a team and to put himself in a a format where he's sharing the chariot of his leadership. He's giving permission for people to kind of push back against him. Um, such humility. I mean, he, he'll walk around and before Sundays and, and ask for input on his homilies and ask for feedback. So to me, he, he is so he's, it's uh, it's his humility that makes him such a great leader, despite not having some of the kind of charismatic gifts that some people often attribute to leadership. Yeah, absolutely. Kurt, I think I saw a few years ago, Father Henry on a video, and he said exactly what you mentioned. I could have gone into cruise control and, and just sort of cruised into retirement, but he, he took up a new way of doing something in leadership in a, in a humble way, which is so, so beautiful. I'm curious to hear from all of you. Uh, if you could go to the chat, um, all, all of you guests here, and maybe put it in a, a few words, a word or two on what comes to mind for you in regards to, to humility or what's perhaps stuck, stuck out uh, even as Allegra and Kurt had shared about this uh, humility piece. It's really, really great. Um, thank you for that. 
So we're gonna we're gonna move right along here. We're we're gonna do little flybys of each of the uh, qualities as we get rolling. And so our next quality is all around grit, and and grit to me is kind of a perseverance, a, a toughness, uh, an ability to keep running the race, you know, in the face of opposition. So, Ben, how about for you? What why is grit essential, and what comes to mind for you when you uh, hear this quality of grit? Yeah, Eric, I agree. I think grit is uh, very much about perseverance because I think being involved with the church at one time or another, you're definitely going to come across a situation where things aren't as uh, rosy as you would hoped and they're not going to plan. Uh, and it can be tough, but you need the, the grit to keep going. Uh, we're quite um, early in our, in our journey with Divine Renovation, so we haven't faced any kind of backlash or resistance yet, and I hope we don't. Uh, but I, I remember before, uh, and another thing I was involved with, a youth project outside of the parish before Divine Renovation, and it had been going for maybe about two years, and we put a lot of effort into it, and um, it was really bearing fruit, and it was really kind of uh, vibrant and exciting, and then almost overnight, it all came crashing down through, I, I suppose, what you call it, personnel changes, or just different changes, it was more or less over overnight, and and to, to me, it was very uh, like a, a deflating time and I kind of lost my enthusiasm and, and lost my excitement. So I'm just really thank God that he gave me the, the grit to keep going. And you just kind of need to trust in him and know that it will get better because it did get better not too long after that. Father Jim, our parish priest, came along and Divine Renovation came along and we started that journey. So I think... What goes along with grit is the knowledge that it will get better, that things are tough just now, but if you keep persevering and have faith, then things will get better. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ben. That's really insightful. In the chat there earlier, Father Martin, I think it was, said, um, you know, from from sometimes the the youngest person in the room, the, the, the insight and the wisdom comes. And it just struck me as you're sharing, like, Maybe there's people on the call here who who might be feeling what you just shared that you you felt you know like kind of downtrodden and and um, maybe given up hope. But um, I pray that this is an encouragement for those on the call who maybe find yourselves in this place that that as you say it, it can get better. There is hope. The Lord's in it. He'll he can create the kind of change that Ben you experienced. So uh, thank you for that very much, um, Allegra. How about yourself? Uh, what about this grit quality? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I, I look at the yes, greatest, you know, as Ben say, you know, it's a determination, it's perseverance. Because as leaders, sometimes we have to make decisions and we have to decide and make choices that can be unpopular um, for people. And um, we can get a lot of pushback or sometimes, you know, you can get very excited about a project. And, you know, it feels like, you know, people are really pushing against that. And to, it's to have the, the determination, the perseverance to know that actually here, I'm in this place right now because the Lord has called me to this place. He has called me into this role, whether it's a paid role or a volunteer role. This is where the Lord has called me. And so it's keeping our eye firmly fixed upon the vision and keeping our eye firmly fixed upon God. And to know, you know, so even throughout my time, um, it's weird because I started my role two and a half weeks before pandemic. So you can see that already, you know, the tide was a little bit against us. And so with all the changes and everything that have to happen, you know, it's been really keeping your head down and keep on going, keep on going. And as I was looking at this, you know, I kept seeing or um a passage of scripture from um, the book of Joshua was coming to mind. It was after Moses had died and, uh, and God says to Joshua, have I not told you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord God, your God will be with you wherever you go. And that is something that's really with me. And in, you know, in persevering it, keep your eye on the vision, keep your eye upon God. And sometimes we have a dip, but we know that's not the end of the road. And as long as we keep our eye firmly fixed on the Lord, just keep going. And, um, and it's surrounding ourselves with people who are willing to go alongside with you and to have that same grit and determination to carry on with the vision and keep their focus upon God and what he's doing. 
Yeah, I, I love that, Allegra. Like, be strong and courageous, you know, going to God's word for that affirmation. Um, for, for myself, I, like, we have to steep in it, you know. I have to go to it on the regular and just kind of sit in it to, to know that I know that I know that God's with me and he's going to bring me through. He's calling me to be strong and courageous despite difficulties. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that. That is awesome. Um, okay, that that is grit. I know we're flying through here. Um, but the third quality we wanted to get into, and Kurt, I'll kick it over to you. Um, the third quality we want to talk about briefly is catalyst. So, so uh, getting things going and 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 energizing situations or or activities. Like Jesus catalyzed his disciples to go and make make disciples of all nations. Um, it struck me thinking about this. This isn't just kind of like a Christian entrepreneurialism kind of thing. Like it's, it's a holy discontent that sparks mission, you know? So, so Kurt, share a little bit about uh, your perspective on this catalyst quality. Yeah. And I want to say, I love seeing all the comments here because really everybody's contributing. This is the flyover. And, and I think that that's the beauty of DR, you know, is, and even with Allegra and Ben is and myself, we're not experts. We're in the trenches and we're learning and, just sharing our learnings and, and uh, it's great to have all everyone participating. And I also want to comment that Allegra, that I, I love how you tie grit to vision because it's not just grit, but like in the divine renovation process, like vision of something uh, different is, is at the foundation. So, um, but about catalyst, um, I was just thinking about catalyst. I, I love the image that's imploded a lot. It seems like over the last year is the idea that, people in leadership, whether it's on a leadership team or in, in a different area of leadership, being not a bottleneck, but a bottle opener, you know, that, that sense of unleashing people and helping to be a person who helps to unleash others. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite kind of leadership books is called Hero Maker. And it, it really, um, this definitely had a profound impact on me, but it, it, one of the quotes it says in this book, Hero Maker, it says, every true movement of the Jesus mission begins with a heart change in the leader. And that happens as we learn to take the spotlight off of ourselves. We must shift from being the hero to becoming a hero maker. And um yeah, so I, I think when I think of catalyst for me, I think of, you know, how do I help? My main energy, my main focus is to find people to invest in so that they can, their gifts can be unleashed and they can be the heroes. And then I'm kind of in the shadows. And as I grow as a leader, I'm actually more in the shadows, but I'm a, I'm a catalyst that's driving and helping to empower people to be able to, to be in that position. Yeah, you're raising other other people up is what I'm hearing from you, Kurt, like the bottle opener piece. Um, Father John in the chat said, yeah, another gift or quality of a leader is to, to nurture gifts in others. So you're housing that kind of under this catalyzing uh, quality, which I think is awesome. Kurt, thanks for that. Uh, ben, how about you? What's what's compelling to you about about this catalyst uh, piece? Yeah, I think uh, Allegra and Kurt had already touched a lot on it even before we got to the catalyst uh, section and that a lot of it is that that question that that thing that someone says to you you know when it was Kurt or Allegra going for for their job uh, or oh, you would be good at this or have you thought about that and for me that uh, the first time that happened was the, the trip to Poland my chaplain said oh why, why don't you consider this and it's and it's such a small act that has such a profound change on the person and and the church and I think uh, go in this kind of leadership role that you have in, in a parish and especially within the divine renovation model the challenge is to go from being the recipient of that question to trying to see the person to ask the question of um, because when we, we are thinking about enacting our vision and it's a big big task that five six people can't do we, we need to bring a whole parish community with us and it's having these relationships with people and trying to have the insight that um the parish priest i have that i have definitely has to to see the skills in people uh, and and encourage them to to join and come with us and and change the change the direction yeah that that's awesome ben that this this catalyst quality kind of unlocking the potential in others is really great um mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to flip along to multiplier next. 
And uh, this quality about multiplying our leadership, not just kind of seeking to replace ourselves, but but this constant view kind of beyond ourselves to those that that we lead and those that those people we lead will lead eventually. So Kurt, talk to us a little bit about uh, the person who's a multiplier. Yeah, this one is so closely tied, obviously, with Catalyst, you know, of, of um, you know, it made me think of the old um, John Maxwell quote. He says, he who thinks he leads but has no followers is only taking a walk. <laughs> you know, at the the foundation of of being of growing as a leader is investing in people who are following you, you know, so it's not standing up and giving talks. It is about investing in people. So you think about being a multiplier. I think there has to be some intentionality that everyone here, if we were to ask who are three people that, you know, you are intentionally investing in as, you know, as um, emerging leaders um, that, that we could give an answer to that. Now, um, so that, that's the challenge, right, is to really be intentional about investing in people that we invest a disproportionate amount of our time in. Uh, relationally and helping them to grow in their leadership. So I think that's at the heart of being a multiplier is intentionally investing in not 20 people, but three or four people. And, and that seeds their growth to be able then to, of course, multiply and carry it and pay it forward to others. Yeah, investing in the few to reach the many right on. Um, ben, how about yourself? Any reflections on this, this multiplier quality? Yeah, I keep on coming back to our parish, our parish priest, Father Jim, because he's definitely fits that role. It, it comes down, I think, to having the passion. And when you have the passion and you can tell in the way that Father Jim speaks that he does, it, it rubs off on other people. Uh, and when you're a witness and you're really living and um, being honest to what, you, what you're believing, especially when you're doing something that's a change like divine renovation and you're passionate about it, then people pick up on that. And, but I also uh, definitely take Kurt's point that uh, it helps to be effective in it. it. It does help to pick or to find a way to discern who the people are that are going to be most effective at multiplying that that message and cascading that message out, um, which I, I suppose comes into the whole strengths finder and all these different tools that we can use to be uh, the st strategic about it. Yeah, awesome insights ben thanks for thanks for sharing that um we're going to finish our five qualities discussion with this last one which is around maturity that quality and i'll kick it to you uh, allegra um, what comes to mind for you when you think about this quality of of maturity i think mostly um as i was i was looking at this quality and looking at this quality it's the focus will be on faith and maturity as disciples and um, realizing that as leaders, you know, I need, you know, we need, I need to be praying more. I need really to study scripture and become more familiar with the word of God. Commit to attending mass, not just on Sundays, whenever I can, you know, daily. You know, adoration, uh, the regular reception of the sacraments. Um, because otherwise, how do I know how the Lord is leading me unless I ask him? How do I know what to do? unless I've listened to what God wants me to do. And also, you know, we are all human beings. So being a leader, we are still on that journey of discipleship. We are still on the journey of growing um, as people, as Christians. And so I know I am weak. I need forgiveness. I need healing. You know, I have a lot of broken places in me. And so as leaders and that maturity and growing in relationship with Jesus and growing in our faith, it's asking the Lord to come and transform and heal and change me and enable me to become bet a better person, to move closer on the journey to holiness. And so it is something that in that vulnerability and bringing those vulnerabilities before God, it's asking him to change me. I see that in Father Mark, my parish priest, you know, that, you know, maturity and vulnerability of knowing that I need to come closer to Christ in order to be able to serve the people he's called me to. And so I see that and I'm inspired by that myself. And that old journey for me in that maturity, in that walking closely to, with the Lord, 
means that in other people on my teams, I'm also hoping that that's rubbing off on them, for them to see actually for me to be leading others, to be helping and supporting others, I need to be supported by Christ myself. I need to be walking more closely to him. And I go back to, what do we know what to do unless we ask Jesus what it is that he wants to do? We can have great ideas. Are they God ideas? So the maturity for me is faith and going deeper into Christ in order to do more. Yeah, amen. Can I get an amen in the chat, please, um, everybody? <laughs> I like her. That is, that's beautiful. Um, Maria in the chat says, yeah, it can be exhausting, this calling, if we're not taking care of ourselves through prayer and the sacraments, which is exactly what you're speaking to, Allegra. And, and it's beautiful to see how, how the Father, even through difficulties and trial, is, is growing us in intimacy with him and, and maturity as his disciples of his, of his son. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to get Matthew to come on, uh, on here now and uh, kind of navigate us through the seats on the bus discussion. Matt, as I mentioned, is a, is a coach or he mentioned is a coach with DR, coaching uh, Ben, your parish as well. And so uh, I'm going to kick it over to you, Matt, to share any thoughts that are coming up for you as we're unpacking these qualities of leadership and then lead us into uh, the right seats on the bus discussion. Yeah, it's thanks for that, Eric. And again, thanks for all your comments. I loved when you just asked, can I get an amen? And then this chat just like amen, like crazy. That was so good. Uh, amen around the world. We just circled the world a few times doing that. So uh, that was great. Well, I mean, as we talk about these qualities, right? A lot of you are like, hey, I see these qualities in myself or the ones I don't have, I wish I had, or I see these qualities in someone else, or it's real easy sometimes for us to see the deficiencies. Like if we're looking at our teams or a specific leadership role, like, gosh, this person might not be in the right place. So it's one thing to identify the qualities, it's quite another to utilize those qualities to put people in places of success, not just places of need. And there's a difference. And so to quote another leadership book to try and keep up with Kurt, my fellow Texan here, uh, Jim Collins wrote a book, Good to Great. And in that book, he talks about this bus analogy. How do you know you have the right people on the bus and in the right seats? which also requires that there's probably some people on the bus that don't belong there. And these are hard leadership concepts and discussions to have, but they're very real and they're urgent and important to do. So when we talk about this whole bus analogy, you know, I think a lot of times it's, it's, it's because we've inherited the bus, right? Like the models we have, maybe a pastor inherited the bus or we've seen people in these leadership roles because they've been lifetime achievement awards. Uh, and the reason we don't do a lot of movement on that is because maybe the pastor or the leadership team doesn't know exactly where they want the bus to go from here because it's still just traveling down the road uh, on cruise control. Or maybe we can't identify some of the giftedness that people need to have in those specific seats. So maybe I'll come to you, Allegra. So getting a little practical here, you know, talking about um, maybe your parish a bit, like how do you ensure that people's gifts match their leadership needs in particular? And how have you seen that worked out at your parish? I think, again, it's interesting because um, I arrived in the parish two and a half weeks before lockdown. So some people I've never met. So some people are my teams and raising as leaders that I've never met in person. So Zoom friendships are forever, I tell you. <laughs> uh, but the first thing would be, you know, what is the vision? You know, so as a leader uh, in whichever capacity you're leading, what is the vision you're working with? And then second to me would be, what kind of people and leaders are you looking for? And I'm one of those people watchers. And, you know, my parish priest laugh when I say I'm watching someone. Because in the conversations or in the ways people are, um, you know, either the way they act or the way they speak, sometimes you can recognize in people something that they haven't recognized in themselves. That was my own experience. And it's actually approaching people. It, you know, I spoke about, you know, maturity in faith, because when I was approaching people here for teams, especially people I hadn't met in person, so there's no teas and coffees after mass, you know, it was about, okay, what's the vision? And then I was saying, okay, Lord, can you show me the people who would be right for this team, for where we're going here? 
And in doing that, it's trying to be open because sometimes we can have very highly skilled people who are not the right fit. Or we might have people who don't seem to have that many gifts, but they're the right person and the right fit. And one of the things that I often watch and I'm watching here, I say, I watch the heart. I'm looking for the heart. So, you know, in some of those qualities we've mentioned now, but also in the humility, in the hunger, the, the wanting to serve, because some skills you can teach, the heart you can't. You know, to have a heart for God, a heart for his people, and wanting to serve. What will happen is, with the vision that we're holding and where we're wanting to go, it might be that for some people, it's not the right place. And it's having the courage and the wisdom and the boldness to say, this might not be the right place at this stage for you. And um, with others, they might think, well, I have nothing to bring, but there's something you've recognized in them and that you know, you're wanting to help them nurture and grow. Um, but it's always, you know, there's no foolproof you know, plan because we're dealing with human beings and we're dealing with people like ourselves who carry a lot of baggage. And so it's, there's a certain wisdom and sometimes it's asking the wisdom of others in knowing how to move people to a different area where they might thrive and will thrive and to try to nurture people who are on board with what you're looking for and to say, okay, this is what I was looking, you know, in the people I'm, you know, I want on the team or to be, to raise here, go for it, <laughs> you know, go after your people and tell them why you're going after them. You know, mm. we talked about what do you see? And it's saying to them, and this is what I see in you, even if you don't yet, and see where that goes. But really pray into that and bring God and say, Lord, show me the people mm. who are right for this we're looking at. Yeah, and it's super practical the way you said that too, about like go after your people. And it might be about you seeing gifts in them that they don't even see in themselves. And that it all goes back to that vision, that foundational capacity that vision has for a team. It's going to help you frame who the right people are on that team to go after them. And maybe even on a, a, a even more practical level, uh, Ben, I have the honor of, of, of being the coach for, for your parish. And Father Jim Duggan is awesome. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, in talking to him about formulating this team back a year ago when he was forming the team that you're part of, he probably saw qualities in you even before you saw them in yourself and had the ability to draw those out and, and recognize the qualities before he just said, Hey, Ben, there's this thing I want you to do. He was already having the conversation with you. Hey, Ben, I see this in you. Mm -hmm. And that was really important. Can you maybe tell me how he then asked you to serve and how did your team bus come together from there? Yeah. Uh, you're right, Matt. Father Jim is very good at doing at doing that, and he invited us all individually to the first meeting of our uh, evangelization group, which our, our senior leadership team. And he told us that over the past year or so, we had all ha each had a conversation with him where we'd said something or talked about something that had piqued his interest, and 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 kind of uh, he thought that through that that we would fit into this uh, this new task, this uh, journey that we're. To, to go on uh, and that's just what's so great about Father Jim and the challenge for us it's all about really it comes down to relationship because if, if you don't have the relationships in, in the community then sometimes it's just going to be the loudest person that seems like the, the the natural leader but especially coming to know the parish better sometimes it's not always the loudest person sometimes it's the quietest person that that has the, the best insight and you can only know these things through building relationships and that's my whole relationship with the parish has changed through that the parish to me before uh, this journey with yourself Matt and Father Jim was just somewhere where we went to go to mass on a Sunday and then came back but now it's it's a real it's a community you know it's a community of believers and when we build these relationships, it's only that way that we can find the the, the right people for the right seats. To use your <laughs> uh, your analogy. Thanks, Ben. And and I guess today, you know, your your journey at the parish. Uh, how would you say, like, you know, looking at your team, just as kind of follow up that, if you're looking at your team now and and the way they function, what do you love about your team? Oh, so much. The best thing about our team is. 
Um, so the five of us and Father Jim were all so different, as, as you know, about different ages, different backgrounds, uh, like different jobs and uh, stages in life. But it's just such a fun and joyous team. And no matter how different we may seem on the surface, when we're approaching the work that we have to do or the message that we have to uh, cascade it's like we all think with the same mind sometimes we all are always on board um on the same page and it's it's really it's surprising because on paper uh we all seem to be coming from different styles and different uh different positions but in, in practice and in reality uh we're all on the same page which is which is the a credit to father jim that he was able to see and us, whatever it is that we all have in common, that that purpose, uh, and now the challenge is to go out and see see that in other people, so that we can take take this forward and go forward with with the community. Thanks, Ben. It's been a joy to see it actually happen too. Yeah. Figuring it out in real time, and for those of you that are on the call with us today, this this does not mean that every step is going to be the perfect step. It just encourages us to take another step and to pivot where we need to and to try mm -hmm. some things and to step out and take some risks and see what happens and, and these leaders that will slowly emerge and be empowered to help you uh, in the mission field at your parish. So, Kurt, you've been uh, doing this as long as I have. Uh, actually, you're older, so you've been doing it longer. Um, I know you've been uh, doing this both at your parish. You've been coaching uh, other parishes around the world as well. I'm just interested if you could maybe share some strategies that could help pastors and key leaders that are working closely with those pastors to raise up leaders and how you start like identifying gifts and aligning those gifts. So back to like putting them on the right seats and the right on the bus, because there's all kinds of leadership roles. It's not just, we're not just looking for the next senior leadership team member. So there's some strategies around like how leaders can go about identifying gifts and raising up new leaders. Yeah, the, the whole uh, image of the getting the right seats on the bus is such a great one. I mean, and it's definitely, I think, like it's been said here, um, getting everybody, like what gets you on the bus is, you know, people who are, are bought into the vision, the values, they're, they're you know, it, and, and you got to be patient in parishes, you know, it's just a big change we're making, the cultural change that we're trying to navigate here. It takes time and we have to really invest in people and help them to see the vision, to be able to buy into the vision, to be on the bus. But there's a time at which if you got the wrong, if you got somebody on the bus that doesn't buy into the vision, that one person can really hold back the bus. And so it's important. I think that's an important concept is that when you have everybody kind of going in the same direction, then the question is, who is in the right seats on the bus for different roles. Um, and I think it's also important, we've seen during COVID, it, it, the pandemic, that sometimes we don't have to be super rigid that certain seats are always the same and the same person, that we need to be flexible to move around. And um, I know like we had people in one department that shifted over to communications or helping with AV and now they've stayed there and we've reshuffled the, the chairs on the bus even. And I think that's really healthy when we know that, you know, these change, these things change, organizations change and the, the, the seats move around and that's normal. Um, but then when you think about the right seats, the right people, the right seats, I, I, I do think the different uh, assessment tools like Strength Finder, you know, I would say really become familiar with how to utilize one of those well. Um, you know, Strength Finder, I think it's good to have two or three that you kind of know how to navigate because because human beings are very complex. I don't think any one assessment paints the whole picture. Strength Finder is very powerful. There's ones about understanding the dreamers and the doers and the fielders and processors. Um, the, the new one that we've been working with, it's really been good, is Patrick Lencioni's new one on working genius and understanding people who have their certain genius and their frustration, but how those, um, you know, work together. So to me, the, the most important thing would begin to do this in a team that you're on. So if you're in a leadership team or you're a part of another team, maybe an alpha team, I would say to use, to take one of these assessments and then use them to begin to learn 
how other people's gifts contribute to a team because I don't have all the gifts, you don't have all the gifts, but together we learn to do something amazing. So I think it's a new concept for a lot of churches, but that sense of really leading out of a team where we all recognize that we have gifts, but we all got blind spots. And in Mm -hmm. isolation, we don't have a chance, but as a team, we can do amazing things. And so for me, the most important thing is to actually do that in a group. And then you can start to try to replicate that in other groups and help other groups to have teams of understanding people's gifts. And then from there, you can figure out who's makes sense to be on what seat on the bus. So I think it's really just connecting with understanding people's gifts and then to to find the right seat. Yeah, thanks for that, Kurt. I'm reminded too that, like you said, the the bus can change a bit, right? I mean, I know for you at your parish and some of the other parishes that have been on this parish renewal journey for a long time, it's almost like you've arrived at a new place and there's not a roadmap or the old vehicle isn't going to get you to the next spot. So there's a little bit of a shuffle, right? A little reorg, if you will. And I know a lot of you on the call just found that in this season, like however you were positioned before COVID, now operating in COVID had to change. And to ask the big question, is that going to have to change again when things open back up more completely? What are the things that need to change? What are the things that need to stay the same? What are the things you need to recapture from the other season? What are the things you captured in this season or began in this season that need to continue in the next season? So it's not just about positioning the people. It's also knowing, again, where you're going. I think Allegra, again, talked about being united in vision and coming back to that vision has to drive where the bus is going to go. Uh, And again, that vision is a God-sized vision that the Holy Spirit has given us. So being rooted in prayer, committing again to prayer, not just for each other, but with each other, over each other. Pray over your leaders. Pray for the Spirit to, to, you know, flow freely through your decisions and through their own hearts and minds. Thank you guys uh, for this discussion. Maybe what I'll do is I'll have you all uh, kind of chime in on the chat for those of you that can. I see some of you are like driving, so don't don't wreck your car trying to t- type into the chat here. But if you're uh, listening still, if you're if you're tuned in, uh, type into the chat. What's what's something you heard today that that you needed to hear? What's something you heard today that resonated with you? What's something of a takeaway or a nugget of truth that you heard from from our presenters today that kind of anchors you to our conversation that you'd like to? to help you on the journey afterwards. Just fill the chat with some of that stuff now. And I'll let the guests kind of read over some of that as it comes in with us. So good. And guys, just to keep in context, this is, again, from 22 countries around the world. We've got over 200 people here today, not because we all have the exact same situation, but we're all dealing with some of the same problems and the same urgent need to raise up leaders, identify the qualities, and put them in the right seats. Uh, I know we took a poll at the beginning. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Jamila or Claire, if you haven't uh, forgotten about that poll, you could pop the poll questions up here just to remind us of the starting point today of why you joined. The half of you are here because you're on a parish leadership team. And then the rest of the half, the rest of those options kind of fill in uh, the other half of the people. A priest uh, seeking to raise up more leaders. You've been invited to a leadership role. We're in a transitional period right now, and those poll results show that. So I think that's why this is so appropriate. But remember, the work is never done. It doesn't end on a webinar. We can't cover it all in a webinar. I know you probably leave with more questions sometimes than you get answered. And uh, I'm I'm just grateful that you decided to to spend this, this time with us today. And before we wrap, I'd like to give you a a few takeaways. So we do have another event coming up here uh, in about a month. And so I know, I think we have a slide for that to kind of let you see this next event is um, gonna be on April the 28th and it's called Parish Reboot, Helping People Find the Way Back. So we talk about leadership and obviously one of those things is we have to find the right people. And in this season, a lot of folks have left. Our churches aren't as full. Our activities aren't as robust. So we're going to do another webinar, and you'll see the different time zones there. And by then, hopefully, we'll all be on the same time zone. This week kind of throws uh, throws us off because some time zones haven't changed yet. But you'll see that's on April 28th. Uh, you can register for that event already, Parish Reboot, Helping People Find Their Way Back. 
We hope that you will see that and share that and join us again. Also, we have kicked off, no pun intended, our Kickstart program for pastors. Uh, we've been doing Kickstarts for, uh, gosh, a couple of years now, uh, but we just uh, were donor funded to offer this to 100 pastors. And I think we have something like 160 pastors enrolled. So I know that math doesn't add up, but praise God for donors and praise God for pastors and this response to this kickstart process, which is intended for pastors to come together in a cohort environment with uh, about six pastors for six coach sessions every other week about some very foundational principles to parish renewal. So if you're watching today and you're thinking that this is just scratch the surface or you still have some work to do or want to dig a little deeper, let us know. Uh, you can check out our Kickstart program online uh, and we'll probably have uh, more spots that will open up, although the response has been immense. So be patient with us and thank you for the great response for those of you that have already joined us. I want to thank Allegra, Ben, and Kurt uh, for your wisdom, for your service to the church, uh, for your partnership and mission. I also want to thank uh, Hannah and Eric, uh, my two counterparts uh, in the other regions that joined us today. And on behalf of the whole ministry, I want to thank everybody for giving an hour of your time today to, to join us, to tune in, to be part of this same mission that we're on, which is to renew God's parish by inspiring, connecting, and equipping people and parishes to become missional. So if we could, if you could pray with me uh, to close out our time and uh, be blessed and, and tune in again with us soon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for gathering your church, this global church, this universal church. I want to thank you for everyone here, whether they're just tuning in because they're curious, or because they're a pastor of a well-oiled leadership team, that we can all come around each other, we can support each other, we can help raise up new leaders in this challenging season, to help us serve the mission in the next challenging season. Lord, as we leave this call, I ask for, for safety. I ask for protection, uh, for healing. And also, Lord, just for your inspiration, for your Holy Spirit to remain with us, to abide with us in all that we do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Thanks again. Thanks again.